I think that's why Ledger became so popular is that it, it allows people to interact with multiple protocols and also allows them to interact with Bitcoin in a way that's much more intuitive than you know having to switch between multiple products and whatnot. You guys were one of the first to allow someone to access all of them um, and in a way that's much more intuitive, like with Ledger Live, for example. Ledger Live does a good, good job of, um, I think, a really elegant way of allowing people to interact with smart contracts in a way that's intuitive. Yeah, thank you. And this is what we are trying uh, to do. Our mission is uh, security and ease of use. And as I said, if you only uh, bet on security, at the end, you don't solve any problem. And this is a, a trade-off that you have to find. Uh, this, is a, this is a complex thing. Uh, so we bet a lot on security. This is why we are uh, so known in the, in the ecosystem. And now we are trying to improve the ease of use. Ledger Live is going in that, in that direction. Our new devices uh, also. So we are, we are trying to, uh, to, 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 to double click on uh, ease of use because the mass adoption won't come with these uh, complex things as hexadecimal uh, uh, string for addresses uh, and uh, understanding what is a digital signature. Uh, also, uh, storing your 24 words is a burden. Th those are some topics that we are uh, trying to tackle. Totally. And, you know, I want to cover something that, a, a recent thing that you all developed called Ledger Recovery. The Ledger Recovery service, there was a bit of um, confusion. I think there was definitely some confusion around how people thought the Ledger devices worked. Um, some people felt, I think, betrayed or that their, their devices were weaker. Um, can you kind of cover what went wrong here on the commu communications with communicating this new service? Yeah. Uh, so first of, uh, and foremost, I think in terms of communication, we uh, could have been better than this. Uh, we plan to uh, launch the service like with uh, proper communication videos and in order to explain it properly. Uh, but in order to make the service available uh, day one, we needed to do some adjustment on the firmware side, for instance. And as soon as we are um, uh, releasing a new feature, a new version of the firmware, we are pr producing release notes uh, explaining what we are doing. And, uh, and some of our users uh, uh, studied the release note, which is great. And they discover the service like this. And I agree this is not the best way uh, to learn this new service. And, and started some uh, speculation about, around what is this service and so on. And instead of doing proactive communication, explaining why this service is great, and uh, maybe you don't need it, but this is another question. Uh, instead of doing proactive communication, we went into uh, uh, answering the speculation which was which were not uh, correct uh, at all. And the idea of this service is, as I said, uh, to remove the burden uh, of um, uh, doing a backup of your 24 words. Because this is not something simple. simple. Even if you know what is um, uh, like uh, key management, uh, you are uh, at ease with uh, generating, doing the backup of your 24 words. Even in, in this case, this is not something simple, simple because you have to think about plenty of different things. Uh, there was often I'm asked, what do you do with your 24 words? I won't tell you, but even if like my OPSEC is not your OPSEC. Well, do you put it on paper? Do you mm -hmm. put it on metal? Mine's on titanium. Mm -hmm. that, and is it, is it etched on metal? Is it the little metal words? Each one has their own game theoretic security. Exactly. Do you have only one copy? Uh, only in your house? What happens if your house burns? Do you want your wife to have an access to your 24 words? Do you want your uh, children uh, to have an access to your 24 words? There are plenty of questions and my answers are not yours. And this is not a, sim a simple question. And, and I, these questions are for people who are at ease with managing their 24 yeah, we're, we're Yeah, we're more technical. We've been around a while. We understand some of the trade-offs. Yeah. What about newcomers? Like, they are uh, used to, uh, the, to their bank account, and then uh, uh, at some point they enter into crypto, and the first thing we say, okay, you will generate this 24 words, and then you will create a backup of them. Yeah. And if you lose it, all your money's gone. Yeah. It's, it's a scary proposition. I mean, uh, private key management, I think, is still one of the biggest UX hurdles to solve, and that's what all you focus on at Ledger. Yeah, totally. So this is, this is what we wanted to do with Recover. This is what we want to do with Recover. 
uh, providing to these newcomers an option uh, for them uh, to have a backup. And the way it's uh, done is uh, secure. Uh, as everything we do at Ledger, uh, we are putting a lot of um, emphasis on uh, security. So we are splitting the seed into uh, three shards. We are encrypting them. These shards are uh, use uh, Shamir secret sharing in order to have a two out of three. And then we send these three shards to three different partners uh, in order to avoid collusion. Also, we are using HS uh, on these partners and so on. Uh, and in order to get uh, an access back to uh, your key, you will go through uh, identity verification process with two different partners and they will give you back uh, access to the different shards that will be recombined on your device so that you uh, access your wallet uh, back. So I've got a couple of questions yeah. on that. One is, I think people were really surprised that you could extract the private key out of a ledger device. But that had always been the case, and that was the case with yourself and like Trezor, for example, as well. Um, you know, wh how do we ensure that Ledger behaves properly, that you don't access the device and extract the private key in a way that's malicious? Yeah, th this part was a bit surprising for me because I know very well how it works and I thought that everyone was clear about how a wallet works in general. I, it, I mean, like software wallet, hardware wallet are all the same. They need to access to your seed in order to make you sign transaction. Uh, like otherwise it wouldn't be possible. Like, so we have to do that. And, and secondly, the, these devices, this software wallet needs to be uh, upgradable. Otherwise we wouldn't be able to uh, fix vulnerabilities. And this is very important to have uh, a device that can be upgraded uh, because of that. And we wouldn't be able to add new features. We wouldn't, wouldn't be able to support staking on Ethereum. We wouldn't be able to support BLS. We wouldn't be able uh, to support Taproot on Bitcoin. So all these things, that's why like the device, the firmware, the operating system needs to be uh, upgraded. So we have uh, this capability um, and this is important. And the device needs to access the seed. So the equation is simple. There was no other way. Uh, so of this course. is why. And, and I was a little bit surprised that a lot of people in the community was discovering this fact. So I, I guess we could have been better in explaining uh, how it works and so on. And uh, at Ledger, we have, uh, so what we are doing when we, uh, when we deploy a new firmware, so there is uh, like internal uh, security evaluation. That's why we have the dungeon. They are mm -hmm. uh, studying the new feature, the new uh, commit that the firmware team uh, is developing. So they are making sure that we don't insert new vulnerabilities. So this is the uh, first uh, phase. And before uh, being able to upgrade the firmware, to deploy it on production, uh, we have a quorum inside a ledger where we have a multisig. Uh, and this multisig must happen in order to make this uh, firmware available to everyone. So this is, a, this is how it works. The firmware is signed uh, in a multisig manner on devices, we have devices to sign our, our firmware, of course. And then when the firmware is signed, it, it's uh, sent to an HSM. And uh, in order for you to upgrade your device, you will create a secure channel, like your device will, uh, uh, will create a secure channel between your device and the HSM in order to, um, to download the, this firmware. So there's not one person who could push the firmware update. It requires a group. A group and of people, yes. I assume it's a, I, I guess you probably wouldn't want to disclose how many, but no, I a group I of won't it. say how many nor who it, who it is of course for not. security reasons. Of course, but you've got a, a group of people who all, who all have to sign, reaches a certain threshold, and then that pushes the firmware updates to the HSM. Totally. This okay. is how it works. Okay, and cool. I'm and not then part of the quorum, so please don't come at my, <laughs> own, not my house. <laughs> Absolutely. It's, uh, you know, so I think, you know, okay, so when the firmware updates push out, and people don't have to download the firmware update. No. Like if you're very cautious and you don't, you're worried about, ledger or just worried about a some flaw existing you don't have to update it exactly and you, you can, can just simply like wait or yeah you could uh, wait for a couple months if yeah. you were worried you're like okay maybe it needs to be looked at a little bit more totally this is something possible this is something you can do and uh, when when it comes to serious security vulnerability we publish them on uh, the dungeon website so you know that uh, in this firmware version we have uh, fixed this vulnerability how it works and so on so if you don't fix it uh, on the long term, it, it can be risky. So it's uh, again a trade-off uh, between trust and security. Um, and uh, Just like if you wouldn't update your phone for two years. Exactly. You know, Apple pushes updates to 
because Apple devices still have flaws once in a while or exploits. And so Apple's like, hey, you should download this because we found one of those and we want to fix it. And, uh, and a small difference you can have uh, with like uh, software on your phone, uh, most of the time software, uh, software updates on your phone are automated, uh, mm -hmm. automatic. So you, you have to uh, go in the menu, in the hidden menu to, uh, to prevent automated uh, upgrade for your Android uh, app. Application. Right, right. Yeah, versus a ledger, you always have to accept the new update. Exactly. You always have to accept exactly. the new firmware. There's no automatic firmware updates. Exactly, totally. Okay. And in order to uh, remove a little bit more, mo a little bit trust into Ledger, uh, we are planning to open source more uh, our uh, open operating system. So we would like to be completely open source, uh, but this is not something uh, possible because we are using smart cards. And this is a good idea to use smart cards because when you use smart cards, you have like strong guarantees on the resistance of the circuit. Like uh, even if you give your nano to an attacker. I, it, it will be like a, a, a very high level of knowledge, time, and money to be able to try to do like uh, real attacks. This is very different from um, from a regular uh, circuit that you can find in uh, other hardware wallet, where like a, s a small knowledge, very small time, and uh, and small equ small equipment allows to extract the secret from uh, from their, their, their devices. This is one difference, and the second di difference is you have strong guarantee on what what kind of code is running on the device, like because uh, the, the the circuit is tamper proof. Because there is some attestation inside uh, the smart card, we are sure that the code that we are upgrading into our devices is genuine. And this mm. is something you can't have on a regular circuit. So this is a, this is a trade-off. So we are using smart card for this, but on the other hand, uh, we have NDA with our uh, provider, and uh, this NDA prevents us to give any information about all the countermeasures of their uh, security circuit, because uh, for them this is uh, more than 20 years of research and, and they have created modes uh, uh, with uh, their technology and they don't want us to uh, give information on how um, the circuits work. And I think that's a good point you bring up. There's a nuanced conversation about security, transparency, and the security that comes through transparency versus obfuscation. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, there's always that trade-off and it sounds like you know, you all have kind of dug into it, and for you all the H, like for you all the, the secure element, you know, for that keeping some of that more private, might be a better thing. Yeah, so we don't want to do security by obscurity, like because this is the this is not a good a good uh, purpose. Like if you do that, that means that once someone discovered uh, this the, this obscurity secret uh, like all the devices would be uh, broken so this is not what we are trying to do we want to do real security not uh, security theater uh, but uh, it means that we are using smart card and the smart cards prevents us to be completely open source mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that we that, that we part of our operating system that can be open source and this is what we are uh, going to do uh, we we are going to um, to separate the part that are under NDA in our code from the part that we are completely RIP, hmm. and uh, this is what we are going to open source. Very cool. And I, what, what, um, what's the timeline look on the open sourcing of your software? I know that you meant you publicly tweeted this out. Yep. Um, that was a I think a couple of weeks ago or a month, about a month ago. You know, what sort of timeline are we looking at? Is this Q3, Q4, uh, 2023? So the, f the first part, which is uh, really like the recover protocol. So uh, first of all, we have uh, open source the uh, recover protocol uh, so that any cryptographic expert, security expert can um, dig into uh, the cryptography, understand how it works, criticize it, uh, find vulnerabilities. As of now, we have we had only good feedback on it. And this is, uh, this is something I... Uh, I uh, want to highlight uh, today. And, uh, and secondly, what you can do with this white paper is to implement your own shard uh, backup provider. So oh, cool. uh, if you want to be your own uh, distributed backup, this is possible. You have to uh, read the white paper, understand how it works, but we will also provide some tools allowing to implement your shard backup providers. So with each one of these shards, instead of them being stored at a service that you, you recommend, mm -hmm. Let's say I don't trust you or the services, then I could store them somewhere else. Yeah, this is something you will be able to do. 
I think we want, with this solution, we don't solve what we wanted to solve at first, like uh, creating ease of use for newcomers. But uh, if you want to, you are a tech savvy, tech savvy user, you don't need the services and uh, you want a distributed backup, you can use uh, our protocol, which is, uh, which is quite uh, nice, I think. And the, the, second, the second part of, of it is open sourcing our code that implements uh, recover protocol inside the device and it comes in the, in the coming weeks, like it's very, uh, very soon. Very cool. I'm excited for that. And I like how you guys created a technical solution and a non-technical one. Mm -hmm. As you mentioned, the original purpose was to be non-technical, but I think a lot of people came back and they wanted to come up with their own version. Yeah, and this is something we, we are going to try to do in the near future. Um, always we want to improve ease of use. Uh, we want the UX, the UX to be as simple as possible for newcomers. And if it's possible for us to do this innovation in the self-sovereign way, we will do it. Even if it doesn't solve the UX part, it's, it's, it also solves the, the, trust, uh, the trust thing. You are tech savvy, you want to uh, manage everything because you understand how it works, you understand the trade-off, you understand the stakes, then great. You can implement your own service, you can implement the same, um, uh, the same feature that we are innovating uh, for, uh, for you, but in a self-sovereign uh, self manner.